Well, here we are at Audi South Austin, and that right there is the Audi S5 Cabriolet. It is a 2 plus 2 convertible, and it is new for 2018. It's actually really cool. You'll see all the details. This one in particular, you'll see has red brake calipers, which means it has the additional sport package. Something I really like about the A5 and S5 cab is this detail right here. The center brake light, the third brake light, is actually built into the trim work so that when the top is down, it's a very seamless look. So this may be the radio and GPS antenna, but there's no weird brake light here, which you'll see on some convertibles, and there's no hump here for a brake light as well. So that means you can get a sleeker look out of this thing. And of course, I think it's time to uh, take a quick look at the sticker. So, here we are. You'll see it is a 2018. This is in particular a twin scroll turbocharged. The supercharged is gone for the S5, and now it is a V6 with a single turbo but twin scrolls. Quattro, so it's basically an all wheel drive convertible, but it also has unique features to, well, it's very standard on Audis. It's typical of Audis to have certain things on their convertibles. All wheel drive is one of them. And folding rear seats is another, which is very weird to see in a convertible, but it does make a lot of sense. So here we are, the base price comes in at 62. Then we have Daytona Gray Pearl Effect, which is a great color here. These are actually Alu Optic trim pieces here, and that's actually delivery sticker. Uh, you'll see the navigation package and the S-Sport package, which explains the red brake calipers. And we go down the list. And the total price, a mere $70,800. As far as fuel economy, it's supposed to get 29 on the highway, and that's really interesting. On the interior, you see this Alcantara suede-like door liner. It's very nice. And we also have st stitched leather here, which is a good touch. And you'll notice leather throughout the vehicle. This actually has a really nice diamond stitch pattern. Now these are very stiff seats and they do fold forward. You just pull on this tab, right? And there's pretty good clearance in here, but if you need more, you just hit this button and the seats will roll forward. And of course you hit the button again and they roll back. And it's obviously twice as fast as it would be if you were normally using it. And then there you go. Let me show you the trunk too while I'm at it. There's a handle in here. And here you go, a release for the rear seat backs. Now this button here is interesting. It actually folds away this cover. This cover protects everything in your luggage compartment for the top to come down. So when you wanna lower the top, this piece has to be down. So I'm gonna leave it down because we're obviously, we're obviously gonna go topless. It's not a power trunk lid though, but that's fine. You'll also see some details here, such as the carbon fiber and a nice large GPS screen. The seats have big bolsters, but they also have an extending squab. One other thing these seats have, that's standard in the S5 actually, is massage. That's this button right here. And I'll show you that as I get along. So uh, let me start this thing up. Also notice here I get a little butler to give me my seatbelt. Not anything really fancy in a coupe these days, but something you might see as fancy. This and this. These things here are the actual microphones for the voice command and the cell phone. So there are no traditional microphones up here because of the wind buffeting. And if the windows were down, nothing could hear you. So they put them here really close to where you speak. So it's a lot easier to hear you without any muffling. And you'll notice, you know, with my hair, as glorious as this hair is, what it's like on the freeway. So let's just take this out, put it in drive. And of course, um, I should just show you real quick the AC. You can set your temperature here. You can press auto. 
and it has little haptic feedback here and you can put it in different modes and you can't really see the sync level option that says open when you have polarized glasses on that's most likely what you're gonna be wearing because the top will be down all the time it better be let's just say that if you have an s5 cabriolet i'd like to see you with the top down okay so we have instrumentation here this is virtual cockpit and you just press view and it will change the display of the gauges and then you can go through the different tabs here by pressing this button so now we have a full view of the map and we also have it here so we can zoom in differently here and then we can have a different zoom level here so we can show like as much as we want on either map at either time that's very flexible and of course we have drive select so pressing this button down here will bring up different modes we'll start off in auto and then we'll work our way to dynamic when we get on the freeway so let's drive this thing now you might have seen my a3 cabriolet video that is a great little car i i like it a lot mainly because you can get a pretty cheap cabriolet brand new and not have too much to worry about however when you go to a price range like this you end up having to lock the car, put the top up, all that kind of stuff, because you definitely do want to protect your investment. But in this case, well, we're going to have some fun here. There's a little bit of traffic, but we'll make do. I do have to say, compared to the S5 Coupe, and the S5 Sportback, when you put the top down on the S5 cab, you really feel and hear the rumble of the exhaust. I personally used to own an SLK 55 AMG. I love to put that top down because it totally changed the dynamic of that car. Not only did it distribute the weight further back, it also opened up the sound of the vehicle. Well, we are in sport mode, but we're not in dynamic mode. So you do hear nice exhaust noises from this thing. <laughs> yeah. Now, of course, Quattro is standard on the A5 cab and the S5 cab. The difference between the A5 and the S5 cabs, well, the A5 is the four cylinder. Whereas this is the six cylinder. And power aside, um, the, other, the other level would be like options. Like here we have great carbon fiber trim. We have Napa leather. You know, driving on this road now, comparing it to maybe the A3, which is a lot lighter than this. I'll put the weight of the A3 here and maybe the S5 here, just for comparison. You'll kind of see why you can have fun in any Audi Cabriolet. You do see a lot of competition from the likes of other manufacturers. At the lower price level with the A3 though, not much competition. The S5 Cabriolet is obviously going to be heavier than the Coupe. I'm not sure about the Sportback, but it feels pretty stiff. The A3 is a very nice vehicle. It's a very good platform. But when you compare it to the A5 or the S5, I mean, you definitely know you're getting more bang for the buck, but it is a lot of buck. And in this case, 70,000 and change. Well, the best thing that you're going to get for that is the performance. So drive select is in dynamic and it automatically goes into sport mode. And of course, this thing has really cool lighting at night while we're waiting for an opening here to go. I can tell you that you do have the ability to change the lighting on the inside. It has little features of trim and it has LED interior lighting on this model. It's a great look and you know, as far as spending this much money compared to the AMG Mercedes I had way back in the day, uh, that was a 2007. It didn't have this much tech. It didn't have all wheel drive and it was only $68,000. So two grand more and you get into a very nice two plus two all wheel drive rocket. And we're out of room. Man. Now 
Now this is what it's like at 72 miles an hour. It's a little noisy in here because there's so many cars on this pavement, but I will assure you, just look at my hair. It's not that windy inside. So it is a very nice cabin and it is bigger here than the A3, which means that there's a lot more surface area, a lot more air to move around. Well, passing power is very good. And of course I have blind spot detection and you can actually get radar crews. This one doesn't have it, but you can get it. Auto collision braking. I mean, auto emergency braking, anti-collision, everything, it has it. And when you get off the freeway and onto a side road or even just a normal boulevard it's a very luxurious cruiser it's still producing the noise though so in in comparison to the a3 i was telling you about where this is very quiet very cruisy this this isn't so subtle but you still can cruise in it i mean obviously now you can hear the exhaust but i can put it in drive mode instead of sport mode and then i can put drive select up into auto again and now it's going to just sort of adhere to the conditions based on see there you go you don't hear the exhaust as much anymore it doesn't really affect the performance because in auto it's going to instantly respond to your inputs so you just mash your foot on the gas it knows what you want And of course, when you're behind slow people like this, you can always rectify that situation. Hey, nice jump. Even on crappy pavement here in Austin, Texas, it has composure, it's just straight. Even when we got what felt like air off that bump, we, we uh, certainly didn't have any issues going straight. I'm really just taking this out to show you that there is an S5 cab and they are fun. Would I buy one? Yeah, if I had the 70,000, but for me right now, I can't do it because I'm selling my house, but maybe one day I will. And of course, when I press the massage button, I see all the options and I use the lumbar support button to toggle through the the menu options i can also adjust the side bolster support as well oh yeah the massage feels great got a massage got the top down got a nice sunset Got a great V6 at my disposal. Oh yeah. You can do some long touring in this thing. You can go to wine country in this. And the brakes are strong too. <laughs> it just sounds awesome. And I do have paddles, so I can manually shift it. I can move this gear selector into the right, so it's in a manual mode, and then I can downshift. Oh my God. Woo. Ah, oh. man. No matter what your budget is, if you got 70,000, look at one of these first, especially, uh, you know, don't get an SUV. That's just 
a sucker's bet. Now, I'm not going to do a zero to 60 for you because, well, we know the S5 is fast. The S5 cab is a little heavier, so it's not technically as fast, but you know what? It's fast. That's all I'm going to say. It's fast. Not that I would ever valet this car either, though. <laughs> okay, so let's see what speed I can get the top to go up on. Speed limit here is 45. The dealer's over there. Audi of South Austin is right here, and when I pull in the driveway and get moving, I will pull up on the thing. I don't want to do it in a turn. Okay, we're in the driveway, and I'm going to execute. Top is pretty quick. It's faster than a hard top. Okay. I mean, it's it's workable, it's not slow, and you're obviously able to do it while you're driving. And at that speed, you know, I'm in a driveway of a parking lot and stuff like that, so I wasn't going uh, 30 miles an hour, but I think that's where the cutoff is. So there you go. The Audi S5 cab. If you like this video, please be sure to like and subscribe and definitely share it with your friends on Twitter and Facebook because your participation definitely helps me get more vehicles to drive for you because I do this for you. So be sure to like and subscribe and I appreciate it. And if you have any comments, leave them below and I do read them all. I delete some too. So uh, you don't want to be that person, though, because when I delete you, I ban you. But in general, please leave a comment. Please like, subscribe, and thanks for watching. Talk to you later.